Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in day 140, May 19th, Job chapters 11 to 14. Zophar and Job, first debate. Overview. Zophar wastes little time boring straight to the heart of the matter as he sees it. Compared to Eliphaz and Bildad, He is almost brutal in his bluntness. Should I remain silent while you Babylon? If only God would speak. If only he would tell you what he thinks. God is doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. 11.3.5.6 He appeals to the knowledge of God, a knowledge beyond that of men, and urges Job to return to God, where he will find both security and hope. Job responds with a lengthy defense in which he acknowledges God's power, defends his own integrity, and reaffirms his steadfast confidence in God. Chapter 11. God is in control, verses 1 to 12. Turn back to him, verses 13 to 20. Zophar's plea for piety. Chapter 12. I never left him. Chapter 13. You're no help. Chapter 14. Help me, God. Job's persistent denial. Insight. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Job 11.2. Zophar appears as a mean, self-made authority who thought he understood Job's problem and didn't, making life all the more miserable for Job who wanted to understand his problem and couldn't. Insight. A radical promise. Job 14.1-2. The Bible often speaks of life in terms of a withering flower or a passing shadow. 14.1-2. See also Psalms 37, 2, 90, 5, and 6, Ecclesiastes 6, 12, and Isaiah 46 to 8. This was a well-known theme to the scribes and teachers of Jesus' day, which made his promise in John 11, 25 to 26, all the more startling. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Job chapter 11, Zophar's first response to Job. Then Zophar, the Namathite, replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torrent of words? Is a person proved innocent just by a lot of talking? Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock God, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim my beliefs are pure, and I am clean in the sight of God. If only God would speak, if only he would tell you, what he thinks, if only he would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, God is doubtless punishing you, far less than you deserve. Can you solve the mysteries of God? Can you discover everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens, and who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If God comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false, and he takes note of all their sins. An empty-headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten with innocence. You'll be strong and free of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help. But the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope 
is death. Job chapter 12. Job's fourth speech, a response to Zophar. Then Job spoke again. You people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you're no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me, for I call on God and expect an answer. I am a just and blameless man, yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling. But robbers are left in peace, and those who provoke God live in safety, though God keeps them in his power. Just ask the animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you, for they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of the Lord. For the life of every living thing is in his hand, and the breath of every human being. The air tests the words it hears, just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. But true wisdom and power are found in God. Counsel and understanding are his. What he destroys cannot be rebuilt. When he puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If he holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. If he releases the waters, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, stripped of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robe of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waist. He leads priests away, stripped of status. He overthrows those with long years in power. He silences the trusted advisor and removes the insight of the elders. He pours disgrace upon princes and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in darkness. He brings light to the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. They grope in the darkness without a light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. Job chapter 13 Job wants to argue his case with God. Look, I have seen all this with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears, and now I understand. I know as much as you do, you are no better than I am. As for me, I would speak directly to the Almighty. I want to argue my case with God himself. As for you, you smear me with lies. As physicians, you are worthless quacks. If only you could be silent. That's the wisest thing you could do. Listen to my charge. Pay attention to my arguments. Are you defending God with lies? Do you make your dishonest arguments for his sake? Will you slant your testimony in his favor? Will you argue God's case for him? What will happen when he finds out what you are doing? Can you fool him as easily as you fool people? No. You will be in trouble with him if you secretly slant your testimony in his favor. Doesn't his majesty terrify you? Doesn't your fear of him overwhelm you? Your platitudes are as valuable as ashes. Your defense is as fragile as a clay pot. Be silent now and leave me alone. Let me speak and I will face the consequences. Why should I put myself in mortal danger and take my life in my own hands? God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I am going to argue my case with him. But this is what will save me. I am not godless. If I were, I could not stand before him. Listen closely to what I am about to say. Hear me out. I have prepared my case. I will be proved innocent. Who can argue with me over this? And if you prove me wrong, I will remain silent and die. Job asks how he has sinned. Oh God, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. Remove your heavy hand from me. And don't terrify me with your awesome presence. Now summon me and I will answer. Or let me speak to you and you reply. Tell me, what have I done wrong? Show me my rebellion and my sin. Why do you turn away from me? Why do you treat me as your enemy? Would you terrify a leaf blown by the wind? Would you chase dry straw? You write bitter accusations against me and bring up all the sins of my youth. You put my feet in stocks. 
You examine all my paths. You trace all my footprints. I waste away like rotting wood, like a moth-eaten coal. Job 14. How frail is humanity? How short is life? How full of trouble? We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Must you keep an eye on such a frail creature and demand an accounting from me? Who can bring purity out of an impure person? No one. You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live. And we are not given a minute longer, so leave us alone and let us rest. We are like hired hands, so let us finish our work in peace. Even a tree has more hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. Though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stump decays, at the scent of water it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling. But when people die, their strength is gone. They breathe their last, and then where are they? As water evaporates from a lake and a river disappears in drought, people are laid to rest and do not rise again. Until the heavens are no more, they will not wake up, nor be roused from their sleep. I wish you would hide me in the grave and forget me there until your anger has passed. But mark your calendar to think of me again. Can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all my years of struggle, and I would eagerly await the release of death. You would call, and I would answer, and you would yearn for me, your handiwork. For then you would guard my steps, instead of watching for my sins. My sins would be sealed in a pouch, and you would cover my guilt. But instead, as mountains fall and crumble, and as rocks fall from a cliff, as water wears away the stones and floods wash away the soil, so you destroy people's hope. You always overpower them and they pass from the scene. You disfigure them in death and send them away. They never know if their children grow up in honor or sink to insignificance. They suffer painfully. Their life is full of trouble. My Daily Walk Few passages in Scripture paint as dark a picture of depression as that found in Job 14. What makes it more remarkable is that the author is describing a believer. Believers are not immune to the despair and despondency that accompany painful circumstances. But believers do have a reservoir that the world knows nothing about for coping with depression. They know God is on their side, Romans 8.31. They know God is in control of both the deceived and the deceiver, Job 12.16. They know justice will ultimately triumph, Job 13.18. Are you given to times of depression about a particular circumstance in your life? The answer is not to dwell on your circumstance but on the greatness of your Creator. He is your salvation. He numbers your every step, and He cares about you. Spend some quiet moments pondering His greatness until you can respond as Job did. Praise the name of the Lord. Chapter 1, verse 21. When it's hard to believe that God cares, that's exactly when we must trust that He does. That's good sound advice, my friends. That's all for today. My friends, it was great reading along with you. Have a great day. Keep up the good work, and God bless. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.